Hey Exoplaneteers, it's David. Today I'm really excited that I get to talk to you about what may very well be one of the most important and historic exoplanet discoveries ever made. Today, Dr. Guillem Anglada Escuda and the rest of his Pale Red Dot project team announced the discovery of a planet orbiting our nearest star, Proxima Centauri. If that wasn't significant enough, this planet, Proxima b, orbits its star at a distance where surface liquid water could reside on its surface, the so-called habitable zone. Yet more, this planet has a minimum mass of just 1.2 Earth masses. That's right, this planet could be a doppelganger of the Earth. Okay, so you can tell I'm really excited about this planet, even though I wasn't even involved in the discovery. And that's because if astronomers had to build or choose or design the best planet we could possibly hope for in the universe, it would be an Earth-like planet around our nearest star, and here we have it. The lead author of this incredible scientific discovery has even made a Cool Worlds video for it, so you can click here to check that out. But take a breath, step back, because let's be honest, we have heard of Earth-like planets being announced in the past, which later evaporated when subsequent scientific scrutiny came to bear on them. Now, subscribers of the Cool Worlds channel will know that we here at the Cool Worlds Lab have also been observing Proxima Centauri to also look for planets. So yes, they beat us, and in principle, I know I should be upset by that, but in reality, I'm just so excited about this planet, I really don't care. Now, we actually used a different method to look for planets than the Pale Red Dot Project team. They measured the velocity of the star very carefully over time to see if it was wobbling in response to an orbiting planet. In contrast, we used the transit method, which is where we monitor the brightness of Proxima Centauri very carefully over time to see if it gets dimmer as a result of a planet passing in front. And I'll get back to the results of that in a moment. What I want to first say about our data, though, is that when we look at it, we don't see any suspicious signs or symptoms that the planet announced today could be just a red herring. So, for example, Proxima b's orbital period is claimed to be 11.2 days. Now, if we saw a periodicity in the activity of the star at that period, we might be suspicious that what was seen was not really a planet, but in fact just stellar noise mimicking a planet. And just to be clear, we don't see that. We do see some strange periods in the Proxima data, but nothing at 11.2 days. The other thing I can say from our data, which is not actually that surprising, is that Proxima Centauri flares a lot. In fact, a lot more than the Sun does. But again, it would be very difficult to imagine how that flare activity could possibly mimic a radial velocity signal at 11.2 days. So early signs are good that this is a real planet, but ultimately, I think because of being burnt so many times in the past, the community will likely be cautious about accepting this planet until we've seen several groups independently confirm that this is a real signal. So how close is Proxima Centauri? Well, even though it's the closest star to us, it's still 4.2 light years away. That's right, it takes light itself over four years to travel the distance. To date, the fastest spacecraft we've ever launched is the New Horizons probe, which went to Pluto. And even if it was pointing in the right direction, it would still take New Horizons about 80,000 years to reach Proxima Centauri. Using our fastest chemical rockets and doing a gravitational slingshot around the fastest moving planet in the solar system, that's Mercury, we might be able to get to Proxima with current technology in 10,000 years. Okay, so that sounds depressingly long, but if we give up on the idea of sending a person, an astronaut, to Proxima Centauri, and instead think about just trying to get a photo, then we could send a nanosatellite, which can travel much, much faster. In fact, you might have heard of a project that was announced earlier this year that wants to do exactly that. It's called Project Starshot. By using a nanosatellite propelled by a high-powered laser, they think it should be possible to reach their target, Alpha Centauri, in just 20 years. Now, we're a long way from actually building this thing, but it's not technologically unreasonable. And if it works, it means that we will be able to send back photos of an alien, Earth-like planet, within our lifetime. Okay, but let's take a step back again and remember that just because this planet is in the habitable zone of its host star, does that mean that we really believe that it could be Earth-like? Could it really be habitable? Well, that depends on a lot of things that we really don't know about this planet just yet. For example, if this planet formed where we see it today, then it probably doesn't have very much water on it. And since all life on the Earth requires water in order to survive, it's generally assumed that this is a key ingredient for life. But if the planet formed further out and migrated inwards, then it could be an ocean world. Similarly, we don't really know what the effect of flares would be on this planet's atmosphere. If the Earth was being bombarded by the same kind of flaring that Proxima b receives, 
it would act to strip the Earth of its ozone. Now, that wouldn't be a great thing for us, but it's not necessarily a showstopper for life on Proxima b. Ultimately, the only way to figure out how habitable Proxima b is would be to measure its atmosphere. And unfortunately, probably the only way to do that will be with transits. Now, remember the Pale Red Dot project team weren't looking for transits. They were using the wobbling star method. Okay, so who here is supposed to be looking for transits? Oh, right, that's me. Now, Gulen was kind enough to tell me about this planet a few weeks back and told me, David, you need to look for this planet. Here's where to look. And believe me, ever since then, I've been working pretty much flat out to try and search for this planet. But this star is hard, largely because of the flares. So this means that we have to use a battery of computationally intensive algorithms to search for Proxima b's transit signal. To do that, I actually had to reach out to NASA and ask for special dispensation to have high priority access to their largest supercomputer, Pleiades. And our final tests are actually running on the system right now. And since I recorded this video a few days before I posted it, Actually, the jobs will probably be done by the time I post this video. So the next thing to do is to analyze those results. And I expect that in about two to three weeks time, I should be able to share with you and the world whether the answer is yes or no from our search. So if you want to be the first to hear about that, then make sure you click the subscribe button below and you can get that and all the other videos from the Coolwords Lab. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you are as excited about this discovery as I am. Make sure you check out our Coolwords video by the discoverer himself. So until next time, stay curious.